Epilepsy is a condition when there is excess electricity in the brain and having spontaneous seizures. Do you know that shaking all over is only a minority of the seizures and epilepsy? Yes, it can only happen in quarter of the time. There are many different types of seizures that can happen and it all depends on where the seizure can start in the brain. Today, you'll be surprised to learn how many different seizure types we have and think of it as a light switch. So this light is connected to the light bulb and wherever this switch is connected to, it will show up something different. Each brain area has a unique and different function and wherever this electricity happens, you will feel or have something different. For example, if the seizure happens in the memory area, you can have deja vu, which means that you feel something that you have experienced this before. You will say, wait, I have deja vu all the time. Welcome to the club, buddy. But make sure to wait until the end of this video because I will reveal all different types of seizures and epilepsy that can happen and this will be a very cool journey for all those new revelations. Well, how do the seizures present? Well, the International League Against Epilepsy had made a very nice classifications of all the different seizure types, which is an excellent tool to help us to understand and study those seizures. Let's start with the generalized seizures. This happens when the seizures and electricity happens in all over the brain. The first and most common type is the uh, generalized tonic-clonic seizures, which will be happening like in two phases. The first one is the tonic phase when the, all the muscles stiff, and then it comes the clonic phase. What happens really is that all the brain goes into f on fire and electricity, and then you will have the tonic phase. And then the body and the brain start to call the firefighter to stop this activity from happening. And then they will be successful sometime to break this, and this will be clonic. And then you go back to the tonic and go, go back to clonic until the end of the seizure. Then comes the clonic seizures, which can happen in one part of the body or the whole body, which is called myoclonic seizures. And it happens a lot in children. And I have a kid who had this myoclonic seizure. So every morning the kid goes in the morning and start to eat his cereal. And then he will have the jerk and then drop the cereal, drop the milk, drop that. So he stained his carpet in his room. So I call it dirty rug syndrome. And it is interesting that lots of kids have this and they are just flow under the radar and just call, oh, they're just clumsy or having those jerks. When in fact, they might be having epilepsy. And then we have atonic seizures, which means that there'll be sudden loss of tone and the patient will fall down to the ground or sometimes just one limb loses the tone. And it is very serious in some conditions when patients have lots and lots of falls and they keep falling and hitting the ground. And sometimes it can lead lots of injuries and patients can be wheelchair bound or having to wear a helmet all the time to protect themselves. And then the epileptic spasm. So this is a special type of seizures that can happen when the children usually happens in, in babies, they have spasm and this happens like this. They will have a spasm and then they will come back. Spasm and then come back. And sometimes their eyes will move along with this spasm. And it is very important to recognize this type of seizure because the treatment is necessary urgently because if you don't treat it, it can affect the development of the child. And sometimes the seizures have without movements and it can happen like in absence seizures when children will be uh, doing their things and then all of a sudden they will stop and start blinking their eyes and, and then they will go back after a few seconds. And it is important to realize that in the classroom, some kids will be studying and then they have a very fragmented lecture because every, every few seconds they will have this absence and then every everything does not make sense to them at the end of the day. Let me know down in the comment what type of seizures you have seen or you know of. All right, those were the generalized seizures. Let's go to the focal seizures. And I think this is where the fun lies. In those seizure types, we have seizures with intact awareness when you have the seizure and you're still aware of your surrounding. And sometimes it is spreading more and can cloud somebody's consciousness and be impaired awareness. And those types of seizures used to be called uh, simple partial and complex partial seizures. All right, now it is time to get the brain. All right, so 
The first type of seizure is the motor seizure. So here is the motor cortex where you can move your arm and leg. And if the seizure happens in this area, then you will have shaking in the arm or leg or, or the face. And sometimes the seizure marches from one area and spread to the other areas of the brain. And this was described uh, before by Dr. Hilling Jackson in his wife at the beginning. Also in the motor seizures can be clonic movements or atonic, the arm will drop. All right, the second type is the emotional area. So the emotions all lie in this area. It's called the amygdala and in the um, frontal lobe as well. So if we have a seizure in the emotional area, which can happen a lot, then the patient will have intense anxiety and fear. And sometimes it can be also a strong emotion such as sudden crying or sudden laughter. And all of those can be seizures. I have a patient, the first time he had seizures were he was in the meeting at his job and then all of a sudden he started crying without and being controlled. <laughs> start crying and then after that he became unresponsive and they went to an, into a big seizure and it is important to differentiate between regular anxiety and panic attacks and these types of seizures and lots of times those types of seizures will be missed as anxiety the key here is that the seizures will progress so they will start in one area and continue to other areas so if you have this intense anxiety and then you will pause and stop and then you have shaking that is a seizure and if it's only anxiety sometimes it's just a panic attack. All right, the second type, it can be in the temporal region when you can lose awareness and have some automatic behavior. So automatic behavior can be something like you're sitting there and you start picking on yourself and be unresponsive. And this type of, of seizure is called automatism. And it is very important to realize that this is a part of the seizure. So here what happened, somebody had a seizure while driving and then he uh, had an accident. And then the police came to check on him and the patient was unresponsive because he was having a seizure. He was picking on himself and this is a very dangerous scenario because the police officer starts saying, hey, hands off the street, uh, hand uh, on the steering wheel, show me your hands. And then the patient is like just picking on himself and it's kind of, it can be, it can lead to a disaster if you do not recognize. And now we teach police officers that those are seizure types. So they will be aware and not have overreaction to this type of seizures. All right, now let's move to the sensation area. So in this part of the brain, it is called the sensory cortex, and this area is responsible for sensations and feeling. If you have a seizure in that area, then you might have some intense pain, tingling or numbness or changes in the sensation. And one of the most interesting and sometimes bizarre seizures can happen in the frontal lobe. So the frontal lobe, the front of the head. This area is very interesting because it carries so many different functions and seizures in the frontal lobe can be associated with emotions such as like intense fear or grimacing of the face and sometimes it's associated with sudden very bizarre movements and jerking especially when it comes out of sleep. Somebody will wake up out of sleep screaming and moving and, and flipping around and even running and I have seen it all in different patients and it can be associated with some paranoia and other different types of behavior. And it also because it controls our desires and who we are, seizures in this lobe can have some intense desires. Somebody had seizures with intense drinking water need. Sometimes they had intense feel to urinate and pee. Sometimes they have intense fear and all different kinds. So it's really kind of very interesting to have. All right, in other areas, where deep inside the brain in this area, it is called the insula. Insula is interesting because it can control the autonomic function. And in this area, if you have a seizure there, sometimes people will have copious mucus and salivation from uh, their mouth, and they can have a pyloerection, means like goosebumps in the skin, uh, hot flashes, or even like uh, some areas of skin becomes red and all of that. Or sometimes it can control the heart on the breathing. So you can have a, heart, a rapid heartbeat or the heart will be slow, 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 or even stops, which can be dangerous if it happens. And let's go back to the occipital cortex. So the occipital cortex here in the back of the head, it is responsible for the perception of vision. And if you have seizures in this area, then you might have some 
uh, vision ch uh, changes such as seeing flashes of light or bubbles or any visual phenomena. So seizures are really vary between one person and another and it changes from which area of the brain it arises from. And as you can see, there are so many different types of seizures. And now we learn all different types of seizures and we need to control them and to learn how to control them and the best tips and tools you can use to control the seizures best, you can see this video and see you in the next one. Salam.